Gift down payments are on the rise and a recent CIBC report shows that this is actually the case across the country. We've seen an 11% increase in the amount of gifts provided to buyers for Canadian home buyers across the country from 2015 until 2024. Again, according to the CIBC report, there was a notable spike after COVID, which unsurprisingly probably coincides with the increase in property values across the country. Now, there's a lot of confusion around gifts and how they work, but one thing we know to be true is that the amount of gifts and gifts being provided is not likely to stop in the coming years as one of the greatest wealth transfers in Canadian history is just underway and looks to be continuing for years to come. So there's some really interesting statistics in this CIBC study, but stay tuned where we talk about not just what's in the study itself, but how you can get a gift and some of the rules around gifting. And more importantly, are Canadians actually getting on average over $100,000 for their first time buying a home? We're gonna talk about that in this video, stay tuned. Directly from the study itself, it says that in fact, the average gift amount for first time buyers has reached approximately $115,000, a 73% increase from 2019. That's 73% increase in just five years. For those moving up the property ladder, getting a gift, so those people that are selling a lower priced property to purchase a higher priced property, the average gift is even higher at $167,000 to get the support to make their way up to that next property. Now this might come as a surprise to many. It came as a surprise to me to honestly read these stats, but in some situations, maybe not. It's important to note that the actual study that CIBC did weighted very heavily to the higher amounts of gift being in Ontario and British Columbia, specifically Vancouver and Toronto. Although it doesn't specify specifically all the different cities that were quoted in the amounts, it is clear that BC and Alberta does receive a higher gift. And unsurprisingly, those are two of the most expensive places to purchase in the country. Specifically in British Columbia, the average gift according to the CIBC article is over $200,000, $204,000, where in Ontario, the average gift was $128,000. Now I could speak from my personal and professional experience that I don't see very many gifts of over $100,000 on a regular basis. It does happen in some situations and frequently it's because of either a grandparent passing an early inheritance or a parent selling a property and providing a gift for their children to be able to get into the marketplace. But the gifts of over $100,000 quite simply just aren't that common outside of say Vancouver itself. In fact, the further that you go east from Vancouver to Chilliwack, for example, the smaller the gift gets. And more importantly, the further that you look out into different areas throughout the province, the lower the gifts are. Now, the truth is that these gifts themselves aren't only just helping the buyers, but they're having an impact on the market dynamics because of the fact that they are getting these gifts from family members who believe that they should provide these large sums of money to their children to get into the marketplace or to make it more affordable or to make up the difference in the price point, it's almost as if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where the gifts themselves are supporting the price points of the properties. Now, it's unlikely that a wealth transfer and these gifts is only what is supporting house prices, specifically when this is only for first-time buyers and move-up buyers in the marketplace itself. But there's definitely no doubt that gifts do support house prices to a degree. And the truth is the wealth transfer that's just beginning right now is only the tip of the iceberg. And there are people coming from all over the world. In fact, I see people getting gifts from a variety of other countries on a regular basis, including India and China and other places throughout the world to help them support their first purchase in the country. Now, whether or not that comes from the sale of properties back home and a gift from family member or generational money, I don't really know in all situations, but I can tell you that it is a combination of people from not just within the country, but also from outside the country that are getting gifts in this country itself. Now, it's interesting to note that over one third of Canadians actually receive a gift. And that's been relatively true to form in my personal experience and seeing the amount of gifts that we get from different people. The one argument that I would make is that the vast majority of the Canadians that I see on a regular basis do not receive a gift of over $100,000. In fact, it's typically closer to the twenty dollars to $30,000 range for the average individual that we see. Although it looks like we could be seeing a bit of a divide between the haves and the have nots. And as we talked about earlier, the wealth transfer. What exactly is a gift? It is a non repayable loan that a direct family member, typically mom, dad, brother, sister, or grandma or grandpa are providing to their children, grandchildren, or whoever that relation is for them to be able to purchase a property. Now, depending on the relationship, in many situations, a gift can be proven by just showing a deposit in account. So a transactional deposit, the money in the account, 
along with a letter from said bank confirming the funds and the source. And depending on if it's from what out of the country or within the country, they may need to show a 30 day transactional history of that money in the accounts before and or after the money was actually transferred itself. Now, the fact is gifts in our country are not something new and they've been around for quite some time. The amount of the gifts increasing dramatically are not surprising. And the fact that the wealth transfer and people come to our country is supporting that is also not surprising. The big question at the end of the day is this widening the gap for the haves and the have nots in the marketplace, allowing people to get into the marketplace who otherwise would not from a gift and other people coming to our country being able to buy housing. Is that taking away from people who are purchasing real estate for their first time by saving up their own money or their parents are providing a more nominal gift like 10 or $20,000? And the answer to that question is undoubtedly to a degree, yes. Yes, if your average home buyer on a salary of $100,000 could only on their own support a purchase of $500,000, but because they're getting a gift of 300 or $400,000, they can now purchase something for eight or nine. It truly does change what they can or cannot do. Now, does this completely change the landscape of real estate and lending? Not really, and not specifically, because at the end of the day, people are still going to buy what they can afford and what they can qualify for. It just means that that gap between the wealthy and the haves and the have-nots continues to grow. And in our country of Canada, that is something that has been ongoing for quite some time and more notable in the last couple of years specifically. And so the question I ask you is, did you receive a gift and or do you expect to receive a gift for your first home or your second home? And did it have a big impact on what you were able to purchase and what you're planning to purchase going forward? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below.